oh, you're here? Or, oh, you're here! Right? Very different. Very different. So that's the main point today. That's the main menu item today, okay? Um, and then finally, I'm going to talk about how uh, the students at my school, what we try to do to help develop prosody naturally in our students. So everyone's clear? Yeah. Okay, so good? All right, yeah, let's get started. Uh, first, have you seen this uh, statement before? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen this. Okay. I've not seen this. First step. Okay. We cannot not communicate. Everything about us, our hair, our smell, the way we're looking, the nonverbal cues, the way we're speaking, everything communicates something to people around us. So if I hadn't shaved today, maybe you would say, oh, maybe I woke up late. So I'm sending a message to you, not intentional, but I'm still sending a message to you. Even if you're tired, maybe my voice is raspy because I went to karaoke until 3 in the morning. I'm still communicating. Oh, you're laughing. You went to karaoke last night. <laughs> See, that laugh, her laugh told me, oh, what he just said, I can understand that. Looks at her friend like, did you hear that? So that she's, she's communicating to me. She's not trying to but we can't not communicate. We're always communicating something to everybody around us. And I think that that's where we want to start today. So let's look first at, um, uh, and then another one more question, sorry about that. When we are in the classroom, I want you to ask yourself one question. It's a really important question. When you're speaking to your students, okay, in class, kids, junior high schools, adult, doesn't matter, are you talking for you? Or are you talking for them? Are you speaking in a way they can understand? Are you using language they can understand? Are you rushing? Are you, are you really considering their English level, their communication ability before you speak? Because if you are, your students will understand more. If you're speaking for you, okay, everyone, come on in, guys, sit down, please. Hey, everybody, over there. Do you think the kids understand that? No. So the first thing we want to think about is why we are talking about this today is we want to always remember to speak for them. That's why we're in the classroom, is to help them understand, and to help them understand the message that we are trying to send so they can develop the skills to communicate. All right. So this is a very general thing. Has anyone seen this model? It's just human communication, interpersonal, two people, three people communication. We have a, a, a sender, somebody sending a message. Okay, this is also true with written, like as well. You can send an email, okay, whatever. There's a, there's, a, there's a message the sender wants to send. They send that message over here to the receiver. If anywhere along this way it doesn't reach here, there's no communication. So who lives in a two-story house or growing up or something? And your mom, you're upstairs, and your mom like, Eric! <laughs> I know you heard me! <laughs> right? So, so, so I understand. So the sender is trying to communicate in a way that the receiver can hear. Okay, that's effort. But if I stand at the bottom of the stand, my daughter's name is Selena. I say, Selena, can you come down? It doesn't reach her, so the communication has failed. So we have to communicate in a way that the receiver is going to understand, and then that receiver will give us feedback of some sort. Okay, coming down, be down soon. You send an email, you get a reply, great. You send us a text message, you get a thumbs up, great. So this is the cycle of communication. So this is the bigger picture. This is why we are in the classroom, is to help our students, to help our students learn how to do this in a different language. They already do it in Japanese. We're just trying to add one more option for them. So that's why we're in the classroom, okay? All right, and if we think about communication in general, have you seen this little circle here before? Spoken communication, like uh, interpersonal communication where we're in the same space talking. And some people disagree with this, <laughs> but roughly 7% of our message are the words. Uh, it seems like it should be higher. Written communication is much higher, of course. 
Our body language, we'll talk about that later today too, just a little bit, communicates about 55% of the message, which is interesting. Because if the kids come into class and you're sitting on the chair and the kid, you know, God, please come in, I'm so happy to see you. The words mean nothing. But your body language and your voice, which is this part here, communicate, I'm tired, I'm not interested, I don't want to be here, or something. So the words really are meaningless. This is communicative. How we speak, how we communicate with our students. All right. Donna, please say that word. Oh. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. Okay, say the word. Oh. Okay, 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 say the word. Oh. Oh, interesting. Okay, okay. Uh, say the word. Oh. Okay. So we have, in the written language, we just have punctuation. Punctuation is kind of our mom. That's all we have. Okay. It's, oh. We don't know how it's said. There's no information about how it's said in the written word. But if we do this, how would you say that? Oh. It could be good or bad, right? It could be, oh, or it could be, oh. <laughs> we don't know, because it's written. So we, we know the word, but we don't know the meaning yet. How about this? <laughs> okay, just, now there's, a, there's an exclamation point here. Oh, you're there's coming! Yeah. Oh, you're coming! Oh, you're coming! Oh, you're coming. But if I change it to a question mark, oh, you're coming. or oh, you're coming, we don't know the full message because it's text. It doesn't have the same umami, or right? it's just on paper with a period. The interesting thing about the written language is it's changed over the years, and we have started to add things like uh, emojis. So if I just say this, go ahead. Come on, say it. You're such a jerk. Come on. You're such a jerk. <laughs> got a tough crowd here. Okay? So this is just flat. You're such a jerk. We don't know. We don't know if you're joking or if it's serious because it's just a period. There's no more information. But sorry. I, I apologize. You're such a jerk. <laughs> but if I say that with a wink, what we 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 have more money. We know you're not serious. You don't think that I'm a jerk, even if you maybe do. <laughs> so try this one. Say this one. Such a jerk. Right? Yeah. Maybe you laugh a little bit, right? But you can hear it in your head because we speak English. So we can hear, ah, I can hear Eric saying that, or I can hear Brian saying that, because I know that. So then we're saying that emoji, and we're putting it in, and we're saying, oh, he's probably saying it like this. We're hearing it in our head, which is interesting, even though it's not written there. And if I change it to, how would you say that? Such a jerk. Such a jerk, jerk. jerk, right? How about that? <laughs> it's such a jerk. It changes completely, right? How we perceive it. Because the written language now has emojis, which we didn't have until about 10 or 15 years ago. I believe Japan was. Thank you, Japan, for communicative umami. Right, here we go. Now there's this. <laughs> now, this is interesting, too, because this is another way of expressing, okay, there's something I want to say, but I'm not saying it. <laughs> right? And so that's also part of the umami in the written. You're such a jerk. <laughs> this this here is that word we must not say, right? And we can add that. <laughs> so this is how we have expressed umami in the written language. Okay? We, we do it in Japanese, we do it in English, and any other language that somebody here may speak. Okay? So, Let's look next at the next part of the pie, nonverbal communication. Just very quickly, I'm not going to talk too much. When you think of nonverbal communication, what do you think of? Just to start saying some words, go ahead. Facial expressions. Facial expressions. In eyes, face, mouth. Eyes and mouth are the biggest one, sure. Okay, go. Any type of gestures, any type of body language, big. <laughs> 
You know, any, uh, any more? Oh yeah, so in that body language, it could be how you sit. There's a very big difference between coming into a presentation and seeing someone sitting like this, seeing someone like this, and seeing someone like this. You're communicating a different message with how you sit. Absolutely. Anything else? Eye contact. Sure. Any type of eye contact. So I said, Brian, it's really nice to see you. How are you doing, man? That's really, really weird because I'm talking to him, but I'm looking at you, right? That's really bizarre, right? Yeah, any time to say, do you like uh, cake? Yes. <laughs> it's confusing signals because the, this is one thing and this is another. Which one do you believe? That's a question, right? Um, and body language is actually much, much bigger. Like if I were to give this presentation like this, and now we're just to come over here and stand here and give the presentation, how do you feel? Weird. <laughs> Proximity, distance, space, very important in the classroom. If you have got one student further away than other students, then they're going to feel more distant. Lighting, temperature, if your room's too hot, what happens to your students? Sleepy. What? Sleepy. They get sleepy, they get lazy, right? I know Satomi will show actually keep her windows open in the classroom for her students so that they're a little cold so they pay attention better. Any, any type of body odor. <laughs> it can be, that's, that's non-verbal. If you stink or you wear a lot of perfume, right? It communicates something. Your hair or lack of hair, right? Your hair lack of hair communicates something. Communicate age maybe, how much time you spent in the morning, you know, what you think about yourself. All of these are part of non-verbal communication. But we're not going to talk too much about that. <laughs> Just want to remember we get the whole circle. So, today we're talking about Prosody. Prosody is not what we say, but how we say it. Yes. Not what we say, but how. Very important. And this will help us in the classroom because our students will start picking up how to communicate in English more naturally. So there are six parts of prosody. Some people say more, but today, six. <laughs> okay, what's number one? Stress. This is not like, oh my god, I'm so stressed. No. <laughs> this is, you know, uh, this one? No, 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 no. That one. That's stress. When we emphasize a word in a sentence or something we say to show that that word has importance. <laughs> Just like, well, you're, oh, you're coming? <laughs> oh, you're coming! Right? Very different, but the stress and our and change changes, uh, changes the meaning. Number two. Nation, right? Kind of the up and down. It's kind of the rhythm of language, right? We'll practice this a little bit later. What? So, I went to the store yesterday. <laughs> Are you interested? I actually am. Oh, this is very, very, that's it, that's it. It was a 7-Eleven, I bought a coffee. <laughs> but because of the buzz, like, oh, something good's coming, right? So this also has an effect with our, our learners as well. Um, pitch. Anyone watch Friends? Of course. Anybody have annoying, who's the annoying voice? Janice.
Sorry for the people at home. <laughs> How loudly we say something. Sometimes quiet is better. They listen. Man, I can't have a secret. It's one of the things I like to do in the classroom.
if you'd like to say that the Ed, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that last name. Does anyone know? Vera? Ed Beer, Ed Vera, Ed B E R E. So if you want to look that up, great for um, very young children. Um, actually, very good for older children as well if you want to focus on prosody. It's a very simple book that kids can pick up and use almost right away. Okie dokie. So, why is prosody important? This is going to be very quick. I think you understand, but I'm just going to go through it quick. Um, one, it helps us express emotion. So we want to teach our kids how to say, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? There's my emotion. Right? We say, oh, I'm fine, thank you. And you? That's a very different statement, very different message. So it helps them express their feelings and their sincerity and their emotions better. Um, it highlights important information, length, long, you know, a little bit long, stress, and then a little bit softer voice maybe. Uh, signals the speaker's attitude. <laughs> I'm fine, thank you, anyway. <laughs> so if we have prosody, we can communicate better. Um, and it helps our students improve communication. So they, they become better communicators, even with limited language. They're like, ah, uh, 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 Eric, Eric, uh, come, come, uh, please, please, uh, 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 ouch, ouch. But we understand. So perfect communication is very different than perfect language. Very different things. And so with prosody, they can become effective communicators much more quickly than if they only focus on language. Uh, sounds more natural, of course. Um, that's always important. Right, nice. um, it also helps them understand, like if somebody's speaking, what's important to the speaker. Well, not this one, that one. And they're, they're like, oh, okay, I know, I, I did this in class, or you know, my teacher talks like this, so I understand, right? Um, and later, hopefully, they can have more meaningful and more nuanced conversations. All right. The question is, though, prosody is, is a big thing. How do we teach it? It's kind of un okay, kids. Today we're going to study stress of the word, and when we put more emphasis on okay, no. the secret is don't teach it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> That's the only secret. Just do it in the class every day. Make it a part of your flashcards. Make it a part of a song. Make it a part of a story. It doesn't matter. Just. Do it. Be an example. Be a great example of a good communicator. Now, I'm very, ah, me, right? Maybe you're not. Maybe you're quieter. And that's okay. You can still, you still have command of your voice. You don't have to be over the top like I am. You know, oh, no, no, not this one. That one. I just pause a little more, a little emphasis. Make it fit your personality. Be authentic. Authentic you. You don't have to be like anybody else. But at least remember, the harder you try, the harder they're going to try that. Okay? So just a couple things of what we do at our school. The main thing is input. <laughs> we make sure they get a lot of input uh, through videos, through songs, through games we play in the classroom, through storybooks, through picture books. Um, so the more we put in, the more it tends to come out. So very quickly, I'll just show you a few examples of what we've done at our school. Oh, sorry, Songs of Chance, uh, videos, and word I'll talk about your piece and express it. Okay. So this is a, a, a class we have. This is the Happy Song. Um, everyone heard the song maybe before? If you're happy, happy, happy. Now this includes also nonverbal. Um, it includes the kids you know, kind of being expressive as they can, very loud voices. Yes, I can. So I'm not going to play the whole song, um, but here it goes. <laughs> We can sing too if you want to. But that's a microphone.
or three songs per class. Try to space them out. It's a good brain break for the kids. Gets them up, you know, a lot of times. Gets them using their voices in a fun way. I think many teachers do that. But when you do the songs, think about it. How can I help them hear all of the words in this song? How can I sing? How gestures can I do to make the song easier for them to learn? Uh, the other thing we do is we have a video playlist uh, program at our school. So we have a big YouTube channel, Health Kids, if anyone's interested. Um, please subscribe. We're almost at a million. So if anybody can help, that'd be great. <laughs> um, and so they watch video, uh, video playlists that we made on YouTube with most, mostly our content. Um, they watch it at home, uh, after bath time, during breakfast. They watch it two, three, four times a week. Um, and that's ended up a lot of students doing quite well. One, this is an example of one of the videos where I use Prasa in the video so that when the students watch this and copy, they're copying Prasadic like uh, uh, my, uh, they're copying me. <laughs> so I'm like happy, sad to see emotions in the video. So give me a video. Emotions. By Ellen Learning. This is good, okay? Here we go. Happy. 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 Sad. 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 Hungry. Hungry. Thirsty. Thirsty. Hot. Hot. Cold.
So yeah, so he's like, no, 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 right? So these are things they're picking up, right? Wait, 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 wait. That's, not, that, that's, not, that's not okay, right? Right, that was Satomi back there. Yeah. Okay, next, this is uh, also some wordplay. This is a, a, a boy who, um, to help develop the prosody, I'll sometimes do like, you are a monkey. Like, no, 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 you are a no, 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 you. So using stress and intonation and all these things to help them develop it. This is just a really funny video I wanted to show today. <laughs> you are a monkey. Stinky poo. Stinky poo. No, I'm not a stinky poo. No. You're a stinky poo. No. No. Activity or a song or anything you're regularly 
lesson plan, anything you regularly do, add one element of prosody to it. It could be loud or soft, it could be fast or slow, it could be stressing one word, you know, what's this? Like it's singing. What's this? Right? Maybe it's a book. Oh, it's a book. <laughs> anything you add and make the, the whole, whole the regular your like classroom lessons much more interesting. Okay, with that said, I would like to say thank you very much. Um, my email is elflearning at my, my email is elflearning at gmail.com. Um, if you'd like to learn more about anything that we have, I'll have a table out there. Um, basically phonics based vocabulary book readers and really cool notebooks for all of our students. And our webpage with tons of free flashcards and everything else is Englishbooks.jp. Um, yeah, so anything you saw today for the most part is downloadable. And please check out our Elf Kids YouTube channel. I just Elf and then Kids. Okay. Any questions at all? I think we're done so. Alright, thank you very much everyone.